Happy Tuesday, it's Shannon from the Shine Advocacy Group. Today we are gonna talk about the last two executive functions. So I know you've been waiting for this. First, what are executive functions? For the last three weeks, we have talked about executive functions. They are life management skills. They're fundamental brain-based skills required to execute tasks and solve problems. So if a student has ADHD or autism or any other learning disability, they may need extra support in these areas. And we do have two executive function coaches who do that to help students shine daily. You can meet with them individually, or we're also working on some downloadable classes for you, so stay tuned for that. So for the last three weeks, we've done two executive functions a, a week, and that brings us to the last two to speak about flexibility or the ability to adapt to new situations and deal with change. So if your student has autism or ADHD, you know what I'm talking about. This is a little difficult. It's what I call a lagging skill um, and it will grow and change. And some things that you can do to help with this is to give a written schedule to know what's next. next. So oftentimes when we are home, either this year because of COVID, we did a lot of homeschooling, or over the summer, we have a big whiteboard and we will list what our day is gonna look like and check things off. For me and my son, that works very well. Um, we also do a lot of prompts. So students who um, struggle with this at school, the teachers will often do if-then statements. So if you do this, then you'll do this, just to help them start to understand what their day is going to look like and give them a little more of an idea so they can be flexible in their thinking. So we in our household have set something up to help with transitions called transition basketball. So if you were to live by me, every time we drive up to our house, you would see my son jet out in the street and start playing basketball before he comes in because that was a thing that he started as his self-awareness because he had difficulty coming into the house and all the excitement to being home and the, the transition was a lot. So he just plays a little basketball, chills himself out and then comes in. He's also 11. When he was younger, that didn't look as pretty as that. And so at home, you can start with the little kids by giving them a high interest motivator. What I mean by that is giving them one task with executive function, how about unpack your backpack, take out your water bottle, put that in the sink, then you can have a snack. Or if you brush your teeth, then we're gonna have time to read a book together. So giving them the outcome that's desired after the task that's not so desired. It seems like we are brushing our teeth a lot in life, isn't it? And then the last thing I wanna talk about is role playing a situation. So there's a lot of things called social stories, books about, other students who struggle, um, you know, the back and forth of conversation is displayed in these books. They are great. Um, there are a lot of them for any subject. Hands are not for hitting, um, personal space camp. These are all great. So I highly recommend looking at them. You can also, for no cost at all, role play a situation with your student. So, <clears throat> excuse me, with your child. So sometimes dinner table talk turns into, guess what happened to me today? So-and-so upset me, what could I do? Have them involved in the problem solving so they don't know that you're working on a skill, they're helping you and they like that much better. So that is flexibility. And then the last executive function that we're gonna speak to is emotional control or the ability to manage one's emotions. This is a tough one. Um, we see this a lot with ADHD. It's a growing, lagging skill, but kids will get there. I've read more than I can um, admit on ADHD. It's a hobby of mine. I read about it constantly and listen to podcasts and, and do research. And I have read anywhere from a year, two years, three years, sometimes kids' brain development is delayed. And so with that being said, emotional control um, and the ability to manage and identify these emotions is sometimes also delayed. It will get there, um, but if it's not there yet, learning how to calm down and walk away is my number one advice to you. So nothing good happens at all when you are trying to parent and your child is what I call at a 10, or if you are at a 10. So if people are upset, they need to walk away and reconvene when they can speak about it, when everyone is calm. The best time to talk about a disagreement is not during the disagreement. Um, and also when speaking about it to your child, teen, young adult, use I, I type statements like, I was really frustrated when you did not 
X, Y, Z. Or boy, it really hurt my feelings when you called me, whatever. Because then it's coming back on you. They're not gonna be as much at the defensive. So if you have the concern, you can state to them what the concern is and then ask them what's going on and how you can solve it together. So that concludes executive functions. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions about executive functions at all, I'm sure you've noticed how very much I like to speak about them. So drop a question below or reach out to us if you'd like your child to work with us individually. Thank you.